Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another edition of Lisa Renee TV. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button today before you leave. And if you do like what you see, please thumbs up the video and make sure to share, share, share on all your social media networks. Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> All right, all right. What's up, guys? I hope um your week is going well. This is Wednesday. Yeah, this is hump day. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> it's an unusual day for me to record, but I had a little time before I dip out and go to work today. I had to be here till four, so yeah, I just had things in my mind. So this video is like um just some like you know thoughts on uh, a couple of issues I was thinking about a little. Um, inconsistencies that I have been seeing, um, like within, I guess, society and then the Christian community as well. So yeah, just some thoughts I was having. So first thing I'll touch on is this little thing that we um, call body count. <laughs> sure. You, my ladies have heard of body count, right? And we've all heard like some guy telling us or like a relationship coach or some site or blog post or some, you know, article we read or something somewhere, you know, they always tell us to keep our body counts low. So it's like, that's a good bit of advice, but it is kind of like, it's an annoying bit of advice too, because I just wonder in the back of my mind, are they telling the fellows the same thing? You know, are they telling them? Probably not, right? Like, they're they're always encouraging. We, and this is something that we've been on for years, right? They've always told women to, you know, keep yourself chaste and, you know, be, the, be a good girl and, you know, keep your legs closed and skirts down. And then they kind of encourage um, guys to do the exact opposite. They kind of go out and have as much fun as they can. And then, you know, women are kind of more trained and, you know, chained down. And... In my mind, it just never has added up, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like they act as if women don't have the same type of sexual urges that men have, that we are not all sexual beings, but, you know, we are, you know, and if you're going to tell girls to keep their body count low, darn it, why don't you tell guys to do the same so that we're all, we're both chasing pure for each other, and then most importantly, that we're both chasing pure for God, and we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice for him, because that's the most important thing, you know, like, stop being one-sided with your advice you know, and, and standard of living that you're trying to, you know, dish out to us, you know, like, please, <laughs> please let, let's get some consistency in the game. Like this is really killing me, you know, cause it, it just, what it does is it just kind of keeps reinforcing this um, idea to women that um, they're not good enough. They're not good enough, which is what I've talked about in previous videos before, that, they, you know, you always have to qualify as a woman to be loved, to be liked, to be accepted in today's society. You kind of always, you have, to, you have to always sign up online on an application, like, I'm signing up to be loved, <laughs> you know, like for somebody to embrace you, you know, and, I mean, if you got too many uh, it, it's one thing about how you look like you got to be thin enough or uh, thick enough. Uh, you got to be the right skin tone. You know, a black woman, I know we, we struggle with it. You got to be the right skin, skin tone. Not too dark, not too light, not whatever, you know. Uh, your hair needs to be a certain way. Maybe if your hair is not natural, it needs to be straight or it's too straight or it's not long enough or whatever. Or you wear too much weave, you got too much makeup, you need makeup, you need weave, you know, whatever. You know, so you have to deal with these types of um, issues and qualifications. But, you know, let you let you have a body count. I mean, you, meaning, I mean, for those of you who like, what is a body count? A se how many sexual partners you had? Okay. So, um, let your body count be a little bit too high. Then it's like, huh, I don't know about this whole love thing, sweetie. I, I can't, I can't be loving on you like now. I don't know. You, you didn't, you didn't dip your toe in the whoredom pool, you know? So as far as loving on you, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I'm going to have to take that ring back. Let me get that ring back about you. And I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> as if we haven't been skinny dipping in the same pool, you know, doing the same old thing. I mean, you, you seem to think that your sin is less, you know, horrible than mine because you may have had old oh, four girls, five girls, and I've had 20 men, you know, but in, in God's eyes, it's the same thing. <laughs> it, it's the same sin. We're both sinners who have fallen short of his short of his glory. 
you know, but we're not sure of his grace. And that's the thing that you need to understand. We'll have the same grace poured upon us that have delivered us and brought us up to the point where we are now. You know, we, we, we have been saved. <laughs> we've been saved. We've been saved from condemnation. You know, we've been saved from destruction. And we're here and we're blessed. And so we need to walk in that, walk in that deliverance and feel good. I, I don't think you have the right to look at me, sir, and make me feel like, you know, crap because I've stumbled in the past. Let me tell you something about body count. Every body that she has been with, I guarantee you it has a story. There's a story attached to the body. There's, there's a piece of pain attached to every body. There's a reason behind that. You know why? You know, you know what's attached to those bodies? Lies. Okay? And I'm not, I'm not trying to beat up on the fellas right now and bash them and say, oh, it's just that. You know, but really part of that body count it being so high is her self-esteem being so low. You know, a lot of times, you know, women with high body counts and slept with a whole lot of guys, it's really the self-esteem. Not It just screams, I didn't love myself. At one point in time, I hated me, <laughs> is, what, is what that is what that represents. You know, so if her body count was really high, her self-esteem was really low at some point in time. A lot of times, you guys um, probably, if you weren't the reason for it, you added to it and you didn't make it any better. Okay, so there is a story attached to it. There is a reason. There's a piece of pain, you know, attached to that. I guarantee you, you get to know the girl, and you know, you, she's the one. God tells you this is your wife, you know, and God tells her, okay, this, that's your husband, whatever, you know. Okay, you're going to learn a lot more about her, so you're going to see past her body count. A real man will see past the body count if you are a woman that has a high body count. I don't think you have anything to worry about because you know, any son sent from God can see past. Your pain can see past your hurt, can see past your emotional scars, your wounds, your body counts. You know, all, all, all this other crap that the world has a hard time, you know, seeing past. The world has has difficulty, you know, because they they they're just they, they take a blind eye to stuff like that. You know, they they're just you know they're blinded and just you know self judgment and just judgment in in general. You know, and they have their idealization of how they feel like a woman should be, and you know they're not necessarily rooted in Christ, you know, so they're, they're not seeing you, you know, from that, from that standpoint, they're looking at you for your failures, um, for the mistakes you made, and they see you as just a sum total of every wrong thing you've done in the past, everything that's happened to you, a lot of times you're blamed, women are blamed for, uh, sexual assaults, uh, molestation, you know, things that they've been through, you know, just the bad situation they've been through in life. You know, all the hurt, all the pain. Somehow you caused it. Somehow you could have done better. It's something you could have done to keep that from happening to you. And that's not true. So, women, if you ever told that, don't believe that lie. Stop. The devil is a lie. He's a father of lies. Stop listening to that fool. Stop listening to these people telling you it's your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You go and you give it to God. You sit before your father and you let him pour into you. And you let him help you get the help that you need. He's going to help you. You know, you, you, you don't, uh, no. <laughs> don't fall for that folly <laughs> from these fools out here. Okay, don't fall from the folly for the fools out here. <laughs> okay, we don't have time for that. Not at all. Okay, now let me like segue. <laughs> let me get off the soapbox from uh, body count into <clears throat> modesty. Let me quickly go into modesty. Modesty is another thing that makes me mad, especially in the Christian community. The reason why modesty makes me mad, I've done a video on this before. I don't know if, if you all have seen it. Please go back and watch. I did it like uh, maybe a couple of years ago or a year ago. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> this is my second view, a new view on modesty. It's like sort of the same as what I said in the last video. Um, I just think there's a lot of, uh, once again, inconsistency with modesty in the Christian community. It's always about the women. It's another way to blame women, to tell women they're responsible for something that they are not responsible for. So, in this case, I hear a lot of Christian men and women uh -huh, telling women that um, you don't want to make your brother stumble. You don't want to make your Christian brother stumble, so you need to watch how you dress and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, are you telling him the same? No. Now, some some of them are, and but most of the time, you already know how it is, ladies. Who who they talking to? Mostly the men or the women? Us. They ain't talking to them. Them guys ain't listening to that. I'm not saying that Christian men walk around their chest out looking crazy. They, they usually don't. But I'm just saying, they ain't talking to them. Men are always absolved of the responsibility. It's always us. 
You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I'm going to read this Bible verse, a couple Bible verses. But I say, walk by the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust of against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to the other, that ye may do the things that ye would. But if you are led by the spirit, you, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, focus on that word, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousies, wraths, wraths, factions, divisions, parties, envyings, drunkenness, revelings, such life of which I forewarn you that they who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's Galatians 5, 16 through 20. First verse. So lasciviousness, what does that even mean? A lot of people are like, what is that? Lasciviousness is defined as unbridled lust, um, excess, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolence. So today, for example, this could include uh indecent bodily movements like crazy, you know, dances or whatever, like uh like what we used to call juking back in when we was eighth grade. I don't know if y'all remember that. In my in my view, my generation, you know, juking, uh that would be Parlous seriousness, unchaste handling of the body, prostitution, etc. Anything producing lewd emotions within someone else. Okay, so um, yeah, you know, so it's it's kind of going in line a little bit with what people are saying, but I think if it puts too much focus on like the woman, it's it's kind of saying that um, women, and it's this thing that you stumble on, right? You're making your brother stumble. And there's another Bible verse, but I think they take that out of context. I'm like, you're not making anybody stumble. But they're, it's like the they're, they're saying almost like you wear yoga pants or leggings or whatever. And I'm like, you know, what's wrong with wearing a pair of yoga pants? Or like, I would, look, I love yoga pants and leggings. Okay, I'll tell you, I'm going to stop wearing my legs. And, I, and my father's okay with it. Like, I have never, as long as you, you know, you wear it, you ain't wear like, you know, something crazy and you're not feeling uncomfortable, you know, because, you know, God has told me. He told me. He let me know. I, I, I go to him for advice about what to wear because I don't want to be feeling uncomfortable when I go out. Because if you're feeling uneasy, it's probably a sign that you need to take that off and rethink things. You know, but you, I mean, it's nothing wrong with wearing leggings or whatever. You know, especially as a curvy woman, you know, it's not hard for me anyway to figure out what should I put on, you know. Because, you know, men are looking anyway. Men look at every woman no matter what shape, but it's definitely if you're curvy or they're looking like, okay, you know, the eyes are rolling and stuff, you know, so you're like, oh, okay, so what should I put on, you know. But I think. It just makes it hard on women to, you know, women, we feel like we're responsible for their emotions or their lust. And you're not. I think, I mean, I figure, look, women, we, we had too much to fight for. We didn't fought so hard. We didn't been beat down, beat down and beat again for years and centuries. I'm not going to take responsibility for nobody's lust. Okay, I got nothing to deal with. I don't have time to have no man's lust on me. Okay? I'm like, he's lust. Because a man will lust after you. You can wear a police uniform. Uh, you can wear a military uniform. And he'll, you can wear a job and you know and and this guy will lust if he's going to lust he's going to lust you know so i feel like his lust is his responsibility him rolling his eyeball out of his head or saying some cat calling you that's that's another thing it's not your fault but people will blame you because if you're gonna blame me for a guy cat calling me or um you know looking at me or staring at me then i guess if i if i am raped and i was wearing a short skirt i guess that's my fault too right Right. Because, see, women have been blamed in the past for wearing shorts. Well, why were you wearing that? I mean, I, why were you, what were you out so late for? Wearing that? <laughs> you asked for it. You know, that's another thing. You know, stop it. Stop stop the blanket. Stop putting us in responsibility for things that men need to take responsibility for. Why do you keep giving men a pass for everything? You even use the Bible to help you. That's what I'm talking about. Stop misinterpreting God's word. Use it. Because God never meant it that way. Stop taking his word to back up your BS. Yeah, I said it. You know, stop stop taking it and trying to, you know, put it off on us. You know, and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, you making your brother stumble. Yeah. You too curvy for them legs. You don't need to be whatever. Uh -uh, that, that is disgusting. Your body is making him stumble. Oh, my God. No, my body ain't making nobody stumble. If I'm going to put on some legs, I'm going to put on my legs. I'm going to be proud of it because the Lord made me this way because I'm beautiful. Every curve, every, you know, <laughs> cut or whatever, <laughs> every dimple, whatever, you know, and I'm going to be proud. I'm not saying I'm going out here just like busting out with a half the top and my see-through legs. I'm like, hi. Like, no. You know, I think that's what they're, that's. 
the thing like that God wouldn't want you to do because then you're exposing yourself and you're that's not glorifying him and that's really making you look bad too. Like it's just not good for your self esteem. But as far as like a woman being proud of her body, because I'm all about women empowerment, us being proud of who we are, how we look. You know, nothing wrong with that. And I think God is all for that. He wants you to love your body. Because I mean, I I didn't like my body. And I spent enough time not liking how I look and how I am. And I'd be darned if I let anybody, I don't care what community, the Christian community, the world, tell me that I can't wear or whatever, you know, I'm making somebody stumble. Please. Well, he be, he needs to watch where he going then. <laughs> if he's stumbling, like, well, what you, why are you stumbling? Why are you stumbling? You know, watch where you going, son. Watch where you going. <laughs> you know, like, come on, anybody got time for that? You know, and you all don't do it either. You know, don't let everybody twist up the word, you know, talk, talk to God. I always go to God like, Daddy, what we, I always say, Daddy, what we wearing today? What we wearing? And he always let me know. <laughs> and I look fabulous. <laughs> First Timothy 2, 9. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold and pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness and good, with good works. So God is really more concerned with... um. Like when you look up Bible verses about modesty, it don't really talk much about your clothing too much. God is more concerned with your works than he is, like what you got on in your yoga pants. I'm like, I didn't give it a crap about yoga pants and leggings. He's really more concerned about what are you doing and what kind of woman you are. And if you look at God's character, that's all part of what I'm telling y'all. Get Have a relationship with him. You got to get to know who he is. You learn his character so you know how he is. There are other Bible verses that tell you he's not concerned with outer appearance as more as he more concerned he is with your inner he's all about how is your heart looking i don't care what you you could be wearing rags but how your heart look your heart should be gold you know i don't care about your i'm not worried about the, the rags and the yoga pad whatever you got on i want to know how this look though how does that look first peter three three through four do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting uh, on of gold or jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with, uh, with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God is, uh, which in God's sight is very precious. Well, what I, what I say, what I say, <laughs> what I say, <laughs> see, I told you, so. And, you know, I'm always backing up. You know, I told you, that's you know, hey, you know, I ain't just shooting from the hip. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, that that's what, he, that's what he's, that's what he said. That's what he's, that's his character. You know, that's what he's looking for. So don't, don't let other people's um, words confuse you and they get you all crazy and you feel like, oh my God, you know, God thinks horribly of me. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Get to, get to know how he sees you. It's important to know how God sees you. Proverbs 31 and 30. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Hello. <laughs> and then finally, Matthew 6 and 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. Okay, so be careful trying to impress humans. What I tell you about humans, there's fickle as breath. What good are they? <laughs> you know, what did he tell you? <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to impress. I'm trying to do this for sister so-and-so and for my friends and for these people. Uh, no, you know, what they think of you is not important. You know, like, don't worry about it. It's more important what God thinks of you. You know, how he sees you. So, that's all I want to say. <laughs> Let me get out of here before I get on another soapbox. I'm sorry. I'm fired up because I've just I've been feeling this for a long time. And I know the Holy Spirit been like telling me, get on. Get, come on. Come on. <laughs> get it out. Get it out, girl. You know, because I've just been hesitating. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to. Well, I'll do it later. You know what? Come on. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it before work because I usually don't record on work days. But I'm like, I'm up. I'm up. I'm going to do it. All right. Y'all enjoy this. Please like and share, comment, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, I love you guys to death. You have a blessed one. I love you. God loves you. Remember that. And um, I'll see you later. Bye.